Mr. Chair, I think we've got Mr. Morris on and we are broadcasting live on YouTube. So if you'll give Robin a second to get back to her seat, I think we'll be ready. All right, thank you, Dr. Munich. I'm here. We appreciate the patience. Mr. Chair, I think you can start. Thank you again. Right. Absolutely. This evening is our monthly meeting of the Board of Adjustment. While we are having to change how we operate, we are still committed to a transparent process and encouragement of public comment during our meetings. We will be accepting testimony from parties. If you wish to testify on any particular petition before us this evening, please use the raise hand feature. You can raise your hand at any time and we will recognize you at the appropriate time for the presentation of evidence for each case. Director of Planning Joe Vunich will be moderating the Zoom meeting and will be asked to provide names of those individuals that wish to speak again as hands are raised. I would like to call the meeting of the City of Wildwood's Board of Adjustment to order. The board members present today are Deborah Coleman, board member, Arnie Sprunger, board member, Bob Morris, board member, Kevin Lux, board member, Daniel Sides, alternate member, and Jim Rubis, alternate member, and myself, Jared Frank, vice chair and acting chair for tonight's meeting. The Department of Planning staff present is Joe Vunich, Director of Planning, and Robin Keefe, Planner. City Administrator Steve Cross, City Attorney John Young, Assistant City Attorney Sam Beffa, and Court Reporter Courtney Talman are all present also. First, I offer into the record the affidavit of public pertaining, a publication pertaining to today's meeting, March 17th, 2022 and take official notice of the zoning ordinance of City of Wildwood, including chapter 400, article two, authorizing and establishing the Board of Adjustments powers and duties. Now, let me explain the hearing procedure. Please be aware the information I'm about to describe is also provided on the Board of Adjustment public hearing procedure handout, which was also available online prior and up to tonight's meeting. This hearing is informal in its nature. However, the meeting's procedures will be recorded by a reporter for future transcription if needed. The petitions are called in the order listed on the agenda. As the petition is called, I will ask for a Department of Planning staff member to read each request into the record. Thereafter, the Department of Planning will have opening remarks and a brief slide presentation. Then the petitioner or his or her representative will be asked to state their name, address, be sworn in by the court reporter and make a brief presentation to the board explaining the nature of the requested variance and present such evidence and witness testimony that may evidence the practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship that may warrant the variance. The board will only consider the unique character of the property to determine whether they warrant the, guarantee, the granting of a variance. Board members may ask questions to clarify the facts of the petitioner's presentation. When the board is satisfied with the material presented by the petitioner, the chair will then ask if there's anyone else present online who would like to speak in favor or opposition to the requested variance. Each speaker will be asked to provide their name and address, be sworn in, and then provide their evidence or oral testimony. Procedurally, the petitioner may request a continuance at any time during the hearing prior to a call for the vote in order to bring an additional evidence or testimony. The board may also continue the proceedings. After the submission of testimony and evidence from all interested parties, the board will ask a staff person to provide the Department of Planning's report on this matter, if requested by any member of the board, the petitioner, or any individual that is participating online. Once all witnesses have been heard, the chair will call for a motion to grant or deny with or without conditions, then the board will vote. At that time, the presentation of evidence relating to the petition is concluded and no further evidence will be permitted. The board may make a decision today. Four members of the board must vote in favor of the variance for it to be approved. If a variance is approved, the petitioner has six months to obtain the necessary permits or establish the use or it will expire. If the board's decision is unfavorable, the petitioner has the right to appeal to the St. Louis County Circuit Court. This appeal must be done within 30 days of the decision. Mr. Vunich, are there any questions at this time? Mr. Chair, um, at this point, there's no questions regarding the introduction that was just completed. Thank you. 
Okay. Hearing no questions, uh, the meeting will proceed. As a special circumstance unique to this meeting of the Board of Adjustment, the board from its last meeting will now be reconvened to make a decision in the matter of the first case on the agenda only. The decision for this case was postponed to this meeting after closing the hearing. Therefore, board members will now cast their vote based only on the evidence heard at the last meeting with no new evidence to be presented or considered this evening. Once this case has been decided, this board will adjourn see nay die so that regular meeting members that were not in attendance at the hearing last month may be seated to consider new matters being presented this evening. The voting members of the board for the first case are member Coleman, member Sprunger, alternate sides, alternate Rubis, and myself, Jared Frank, vice chair and acting chair. Please read the first request into the record, which will be followed by a call for a vote. Mr. Chair, members of the board, the first item is BA 0-22, Kathleen O. Maxwell and Margaret H. Lewis, 1901 Shiloh Oaks Drive, Wilder, Missouri 63005, care of Caroline L. Hermanley, 190 Carondelet Avenue, Suite 600, Clayton, Missouri 63105, request an exception to the minimum yard requirements general for the purpose of retaining an existing indoor riding arena structure at its present location upon the property located at 1901 Shiloh Oaks Drive, locator number 23X630052, Shiloh Oaks Farm, Lot 1, which would authorize a side yard setback of 31 feet in lieu of the 100 foot standard. This request is contrary to the requirements of chapter 415.090 NU non-urban district regulations of the city of Wildwood zoning ordinance. This, the, pardon me, the public hearing for this item concluded on February 17, 2022, but the decision on the matter was postponed to this month's meeting. Discussion on this petition will be limited to the board members leading to a requested action on their part. This particular property is located in ward one. Thank you. Because this matter, uh, the proceeding is closed for a vote. Um, at this time, I would like to call for a vote to, for a motion to approve, deny or approve with conditions. I submit a motion to approve with conditions. Can you please state those conditions, Dan? Mm -hmm. Well, the ones that the board have put on, which would be the landscaping design, the only thing I would add is there apparently was some erosion problem. So I would say that that would need to be planned to take care of that submitted along with the landscaping plan. And, and I'm speaking toward water that goes toward um, so, some property. So Mr. Sides, you have a motion to approve based on the conditions that a landscaping plan is submitted to the city as well as an erosion plan? Yes. Do I have a second for that motion? Mr. Chair, if there is not a second, that motion would fail and Correct. the board could consider another. Hearing one last time that there is no second to that, um, that motion has failed. So again, we'll have a motion to approve, deny or approve with conditions. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to deny the variance request. Thank you, Mr. Sprunger. Has a motion to deny the variance request. Do I have a second? I would like to second that. Thank you, Ms. Coleman. At this time, prior to a vote, do we, is there any other deliberation amongst ourselves that we would like to discuss prior to calling for a vote? 
Does anybody have anything they'd like to add or? Seeing none, um, we have a motion to deny. Mr. Rubis, how do you vote? Yay. Mr. Sprunger? Deny. Ms. Coleman? Deny. Mr. Sides? Well, I'm voting against that motion. Would that be a nay? Correct. And I, uh, I vote yay on the motion to deny as well. So that motion, I'm sorry, that variance has been denied. That request has been denied. Director Vunich, and do, does that conclude this matter? Yes, sir. This concludes this particular matter, and now we'll seat the um, regular members. With uh, then, with this matter concluded, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. See, nay, die. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn and move into the? Do I need to officially do that, Joe? Make a motion yeah. to uh, close this proceedings and uh, reopen. Um, for we do, Robin, um, according to your email, I'm supposed to exit now for the rest of the meeting. Is that correct? That is correct. Correct. So, yes. Ms. Rubis, you motion to to move into the into the other matters. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Robin, do you want to take roll call, or would you like me to? Uh, let's see. Member Lux, Vice Chair Frank, or Acting Chair. I guess present, or how? I'm not sure how. We're, I, <laughs> right, well, normally, we need, normally you call the roll. Yeah, it says ask for roll to be called. Do we need to officially do the vote to? Okay, so yes, I I vote yes to to go to the regular scheduled meeting. Sorry, it's confusing. New new territory here. Um, it, am I only calling the role for those who are part of this? Correct. For the current oh, correct. Yeah. Member, member Coleman. Yes. Member Sprunner. I'm still here. Alternate size. Yes. <laughs> Alternate Rubis. Present. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your patience as we as we as we work through this. So the Thank voting you. members of the board for the remaining cases on our agenda are Member Coleman, Member Sprunger, Member Morris, Member Lux, and myself, Jared Frank, Vice Chair and Acting Chair. So I will say goodbye to you all. Yes. Thank you guys. Thank you, Mr. Sides. We appreciate it. Good night, Dan. Good night. Rob. Robin, logistically, are we ready to go on to the second request? Uh, let us just see if we can pull up Mr. Lux. All right, member Lux is now with us on the panel. Okay. Please read the uh, second request in the record, which will be followed by initial comments by the Department of Planning and a brief slide presentation. Mr. Chair, members of the board, the next case is BA09-22, Claudia and Michael Wilkes, 912 Prince Charles Way, Ellisville, Missouri, 63021. Request an exception to the minimum yard requirements general for the purpose of constructing a new single family dwelling upon the property located at 3324 Pine Cliff Road, locator number 25V 6201. I was down with the 25 there. 01. Asks to start. Hey, Robin, you're not. There you go. Go ahead. Sorry, Director Judith. All right. LaSalle Woods Edition resubdivision lot 15, which would authorize a front yard setback of zero feet in lieu of the 50 foot standard. This request is contrary to the requirements of chapter 415.090 NU non-urban district regulations of the city of Wildwood zoning ordinance. This particular property is located in ward six. 
And Mr. Chair, members of the board, before Ms. Keefe provides the slide presentation to the members, the Department of Planning would like to introduce into the record the following items. Chapter 400, Article 2 of the City of Wildwood Municipal Code, the Board of Adjustment. Chapter 415, the Zoning Ordinance of the same City of Wildwood Municipal Code. The file that has been developed and maintained by the Department regarding this particular matter and all contents contained therein, including the department's report with recommendation, and then any testimony or evidence that is provided as part of tonight's public hearing. Thank you. All right, please go ahead and proceed, Ms. Keefe. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Our first case this, well, our second case this evening uh, it has to do with the construction of a single family dwelling in the LaSalle Wood subdivision. The subject property is located in southeastern Wildwood. Uh, it, it, the subdiv subdivision is located off Old State Road and to the south here you can see Highway 109. It is, on a, um, it is part of a large lot residential land use pattern. Um, as you can see that's um, well, well in the area, we're very prevalent. The subject lot is almost five acres in size, it is located off of Pine Cliff Road, which is a privately maintained road by the Homeowners Association. Uh, this road is 50 feet wide, and then the property is also, um, also includes an ingress-egress easement. Uh, which is especially pertinent to this case, and that is 20 foot wide. The lot is primarily wooded, as are most of the lots in this subdivision, and um, also consistent with other lots, it, is, it has a very severe slope having to do with being located on top of a ridge. It has 100 and feet, 100, 150 feet of overall relief. Uh, these pictures were taken on the approach to the subject lot on Pine Cliff Road, just to give you a sense of the character of the area. So these are other residences. The subject lot is currently vacant and a single family uh, dwelling is proposed. Uh, so the plan, as you can see depicted here, is for the home to be 30 feet in lieu of 50 feet away from uh, Pine Cliff Road. And just, we put it at zero feet uh, from the ingress egress easement. So uh, that is a point of clarification for uh, those who may have been confused by the agenda language. We're looking at zero feet from this ingress, ingress egress easement and 30 feet from Pine Cliff. Uh, currently, we are looking south uh, to the east is the ingress egress uh, easement and south we're looking at Pine Cliff Road. So this is in the general location of the subject lot. This is the subject lot here and this is the easement area. This is an asphalt turnaround area and this is the city vehicle right there. This is looking southeast, generally. Here we are looking north up Pine Cliff Road and slightly east. And this is the frontage area of the subject lot, looking northeast. Because of the nature of uh, the topography in this area, several variances have been approved. Uh, three off of Pine Cliff Road and several others in the subdivision as a whole. Uh, it should be noted that off of Pine Cliff Road, all the variances have been approved to the west. And as you can see depicted here, the reasoning for that is uh, that they were built below the grade of the roadway. Uh, so they're a little bit, so it, it lessened the visual impact of the residences that, that did have to move closer to the roadway. 
This view is of the house that would be across the street from the uh, subject lot where the new uh, residence is proposed to be built. And then this is standing in the subject property uh, looking at that residence. And as noted in the recommendation report, this residence itself was granted a variance request by the Board of Adjustment uh, to be at 35 feet in lieu of 50 feet um, from Pine Cliff. The department has had discussions with the petitioner about uh, the uh, about the potential for placing uh, the proposed residence slightly differently than uh, as was submitted to the department. Our understanding is the applicant is open to uh, that possibility, but uh, that feasibility just needs to be assessed with the architect. Um, this is a very crude depiction of what we're discussing, uh, but it gives you an idea of the orientation uh, we're proposing um, in order to lessen the visual impact to the other residences um, in, uh, off of Pine Cliff Road in this area. And, and part of the reason we propose this is just to not have two residences uh, requesting similar variances right across the street from, another, from one another. This is looking at the neighboring residence to the south across the uh, ingress egress easement and asphalt area. This is standing within the subject property. And then this gives you an idea of the uh, front portion of the subject, subject lot. And this is looking north to the east, to the northeast. So this gives you a sense of where it starts to drop off to the northwest. So this is the neighboring residence to the north. Again, to the northeast, again, to the north. This is looking east. This is standing in that asphalt uh, turnaround area, looking northwest. And this is looking northwest. There have been mixed support for the request in the neighborhood. Uh, with some neighbors in support and some against. Uh, there is also um, some, some general confusion noted about, again, about that agenda language uh, requesting the zero foot setback from the ingress egress easement. And with that, I'll turn it over to the applicant who I believe uh, has some additional information to share with you this evening. Uh, Director Vunich and I are here if you have any questions as are um, other staff, including Mr. Cross. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Um, at this time, I'd like to call a petitioner forward, ask that he or she state their name, address, relation to the property, then be sworn in by the court reporter. Michael and Claudia Wilkes, 912 Prince Charles Way, Ellisville, Missouri, 63021. Uh, we are the co-owners of the property. Okay. Courtney, you swear them in, please. Uh, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, it is. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Wilkes. Um, can you please explain the nature of the request and the hardship and practical difficulty necessitating the variance as it relates to the character of the property? Yeah, so uh, the site, as Robbins noted, um, has a significant slope. And when we first looked at the site, uh, knew it was gonna be a challenge from a constructability aspect. After meeting with our builder and our architect, uh, you know, typical, to build a walkout basement style house is about an eight foot elevation drop. Uh, with, with a very narrow property, we were able to develop with the architect. Uh, the most we can get by moving this thing in different orientation 
is is about 12 to 15 feet with the standard 50 foot setback. So it would make the constructability very difficult. Um, with the 30 foot setback, we get closer to that that 10 foot level, which is still difficult, but it's it's manageable. Um, so for 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 that reason, and then just in nature with with other variances that were approved uh, in this in this um, subdivision. Um, that is where the re request comes from. Okay. Anything else you like to add? Um, I'd just like to note, I know that there was a lot of questions um, from surrounding neighbors regarding the ingress egress um, road. And I know that that is a, a source of overflow parking. And, and so I just want to clarify to um, any everybody on the call that you know, we're not using that egress as a personal driveway. We're just trying to set our house off of that driveway to lessen the impact to Pine Cliff itself. Um, hence the reason why it was closer to that as opposed to trying to get it closer to Pine Cliff to do a driveway. So I just wanted to, to do that point of clarification for everybody on the call. Yeah, that, that road, that turnaround will still be, you know, available and accessible for people. Okay, great. Uh, at this time, we'll open up the uh, open up the discussion to board members. Um, if there's anything else the uh, the board members would like to to ask questions on, so so I do have a a quick question. In Robin's presentation, I'm not sure if I quite caught that correctly. There was maybe an alternative uh, consideration for a building site. Is is that correct? And if so, could you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, absolutely. So originally we had uh, proposed the 30 foot setback with the front of our house being parallel with Pine Cliff and um, Robin and um, the city had brought up um, because the road across the street from us also had a variance request um, approved by the board that um, the houses would be, you know, right across the street from each other would be closer to the road than the rest of the neighborhood. So um, she had proposed that maybe we turn the house to the left to where the front of our home would be facing more towards that egress um, road instead. And we're looking into that. We just don't know the feasibility until we can get out there with our architect and the builder and do some stakeouts. Um, so we're just waiting on on that. Yeah, in, th in that scenario, the the um, north, I'd say the northwest corner would be would be in that 30 foot setback from from Pine Cliff, but the majority of the rest of the house would be beyond the 50 foot point at that from Pine Cliff at, th at that point in time. So that option would actually um, get you very close to being in compliance with these setbacks, correct? With, with the setbacks with Pine Cliff, yeah. Yes. With with uh, with the ingress egress, it's going to be very difficult uh, because of how deep that cuts into the property in the the buildable area of the property. Yes. Member Sprunner, if I may, or Mr. Chair, rather, um, I just like to clarify that we are we are asking for, or the petitioners are asking for this variance in either scenario this evening. In regards to that, Robin, would we need to clarify that, or essentially we're granting a variance, and at that at a later date, working with the city, the petitioner would decide on which avenue they is, is most suitable. Would that be the case? So what the, the, de, the department recommendation suggested that you approve the variance uh, with the condition that they conduct the site feasibility analysis and then submit to the department a final site plan. And then the department would go through its typical zoning authorization process at that point. Gotcha. Thank you. So would the city, if they did come back with a plan that uh, was an alternate, the city would then evaluate both of those and decide which of the two made more sense? That, that is correct. The idea behind this alternative placement is just to lessen the visual impact of granting the variance. If, if the house were parallel, there would be more of that visual impact along the roadway 
with it being angled just a little bit, they get a nice, they still have a very attractive approach coming up the hill. Um, so it's not quite like parallel to that, that ingress egress. Um, so they get, they get a nice approach. They still get that nice, you know, come into my house frontage, but they, um, they aren't directly parallel across from that, that house across the street. And then one other question, maybe Robin, for you, I, you, you presented the slide, but I'm not sure if I was able to digest it. I think I was in terms of those property owners who are literally adjacent to um, the petitioner, uh, were there any that were in opposition and were there any that were in support? And, and I'm talking about those that are literally right beside them, you know, the ones that are most affected. I don't believe the department uh, received any comments from those neighbors looking at what I have depicted. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Uh, just one for me. I, I think I noticed in several of the comments that there was concern for what they thought was the confusion over the zero foot uh, change. Uh, has anyone gone back to clarify that with them or to seek any follow up commentary based on the correct understanding of the situation to see if that might change their point of view at all? Well, I'll start with an answer to that. My understanding is that there was going to be that engagement. So I would put that uh, on the applicant at this point. I know that the department clarified the understanding in an email that uh, we sent to the petitioner with the intent that they were going to then have that conversation with neighbors. Um, so if they would like to follow up. Uh, yes. Yeah, so Robin uh, sent me an email with the clarification on the zero foot on the egress and then 30 foot on Pine Cliff. Um, that was after the the negative comments or the, the opposition comments, I believe, were um, submitted. Um, I then sent that email to, um, we don't really have an HOA, but we have a road maintenance agreement. So the head of um, our road maintenance agreement, I sent that to him and he did send it out to um, the remaining neighbors um, or to the the whole neighborhood, the directory. Um, I did get a few phone calls and I think that's when we got the positive comments coming through for the, the approval was after that clarification. Okay. okay. And then, and if I may, uh, the department would note that we did have a one commenter reverse their position. And uh, also I've, I've received a few phone calls from people asking questions about the ingress egress uh, easement. So I do believe word, word got out. Okay. Any other questions from the, uh, from the, the board? Hearing none, uh, at this time we'll uh, open up to speakers in the audience who may want to speak in favor or opposition to the request. Mr. Vunich. If you could keep an eye on that. And Mr. Chair, we have one individual that has used the raise hand feature. And so I'm going to promote Christopher Fry. And if any of the others that are on the Zoom call would like to speak, if you would too, please use the raise hand feature. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Fry. Hey, good evening. If I could have you uh, state your name, address, um, in relationship to the uh, to the property. Yeah, I, my name is Christopher Fry. I'm at three three one six Johns Cabin Road here in Wildwood, Missouri, in the LaSalle Woods neighborhood, and I am the president of the LaSalle Woods Road Maintenance Agreement. And so I figured, since um, Claudia just mentioned my name, I would come and just give some testimony. Absolutely. If I can uh, have you be sworn in, please, by the court reporter. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Thank you, Courtney. All right, Mr. Fry, floor is yours. Yeah, here. so I, um, Claudia has been in contact with us related to the road maintenance agreement, and we do maintain a, not complete, but a pretty full list of uh, email addresses for the neighbors. So just 
to clarify that when she sent me the clarification from Robin around the setback, because I had uh, initiated, when I saw the zero foot, I threw me off a little bit, right? So we clarified, uh, Claudia sent me the, the, the reply from Robin, and then we did distribute that out to all of the uh, email addresses that we have for the neighbors here in LaSalle Woods. So it's not a complete list, right? Because not everybody gives us their email address, but it was, um, was delivered. And then I did receive a few uh, replies back, um, but they were really just clarifying maybe what the house would look like. And they really didn't have much comments either for or against. So I just wanted to offer that. Um, and I also just came here to hear about the ingress egress variance, right? Because that's still, uh, we still do, I guess, maintain that part of that road, right? It still gets salt treatment and plowed and things like that, that little setback. But um, I, I don't really have any comments necessarily for or against, but I thought I would offer that testimony. Great. Thank you, Mr. Fry. Does anybody have any, any questions based on, on, on that feedback? Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mr. Fry. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bunich, anybody else that uh, used that raise hand feature? You're, you're muted, Director Bunich. Thank you. There are two attendees still, and again, I'll offer to them if you'd like to speak on this particular matter, if you'd use the raise hand feature, I would be glad to promote you to participate. Mr. Chair, I do not see a raised hand feature, so I believe, at least as far as our attendees, um, we have uh, accommodated them. Seeing none um, at this time, did uh, any would anybody like to, to hear an oral presentation of the department's report? Seeing none, uh, does the Department of Planning have uh, any final comments regarding this petition? Uh, yes, the Department of Planning would just like to assert that we are supporting the variance this evening. Uh, regardless of what orientation the home ultimately goes in, there's there's definitely a situation on this lot where that southwestern portion of it is, is the most buildable portion of the lot before it steeply drops off um, into the valley. Uh, so, so we're just working with the applicant to find the best possible uh, position for the house, um, given the topography in order to um, mitigate the circumstances. Uh, but we are supporting it, recognizing that um, that ingress egress easement is, as well as the topography, uh, as well as the topography is, is limiting the buildability on that lot. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. With your permission, I'd just like to clarify, the department is, as Ms. Keith mentioned, supporting the variance, but the department believes that the variance at a zero foot setback is more relative to that 20 foot wide ingress egress easement that provides that turnaround. If the board is inclined to support the variance, the department would recommend a condition to that would be that a minimum setback from Pinecliff be maintained at 30 feet, not zero. Thank you. Okay. Any, uh, any final comments from the board? Yeah, I, I actually have a question uh, for, the, the, for the department. One of the uh, objections that was raised, uh, they stated they felt like um, because of the location of the house that it would, it would change or increase uh, runoff, icing during winter and those sorts of things. Is it fair to assume that the city has reviewed this and has determined that whether they were 50 feet back or 30 feet back, uh, that the impact in terms of any runoff or icing or those sorts of things would, would be the, the same? So what the, uh, I guess, based on the topography, um, it, it appears that the runoff would, would be going back behind the house. Um, but as far as uh, any further consultation, no, the, the city has not engaged. Okay, so, so, and I thought that was the case just looking at the topography, but 
any runoff and so forth is not going to be heading toward the road or anything like that. It's going to be going to the back of the lot. Is that correct? That that is what the department would be uh, looking to achieve through the zoning authorization process. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And we would we would be working with our Department of Public Works on that. And Mr. Sprunger, I believe that's a critical component. No project that involves any level of grading doesn't does not get authorized without the Department of Public Works verifying that it follows all of the requirements and standards. Very good. Thank you. Any additional final comments from the board? Okay. At this time, we will close the proceeding for a vote. Can I have a motion to approve, a motion to deny, or to approve with conditions? I will make a motion to approve with the condition uh, for the 30-foot setback as a variance. Okay. Do I have a second to approve with a 30-foot with Joe? Can you help me with that with that work? <laughs> Not to give us the instructions, but just simply stating in what your what your object or what your thought is on that. Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, members of the board, the department would respectfully request that the variance be granted at a zero foot setback, except a 30 foot distance be maintained for any building or structure from Pine Cliff Road. Okay. Deborah, could, would you oh. like to restate your, uh, your motion? Okay, let me get this correct. I uh, vote to approve uh, with the condition that the setback be 30 feet from Pine Bluff Road. Is that the name, Pine Bluff? Pine Cliff Road. Pine Cliff, Pine Cliff sorry, yes. Okay. We have a motion to approve with the condition that a 30 foot setback is maintained from Pine Cliff Road. Do I have a second to that motion? I'll second that. Okay, Mr. Sprunger, thank you for the second. Um, Ms. Coleman, how do you vote? Approve. Mr. Lux, how do you vote? Approve. Mr. Morris? You're on mute there, Mr. Morris, if you could just. Hit the space bar if you can, Mr. Morris. I think Robin's coming to help you. Okay, approve. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Um, and I vote to approve as well. Congratulations, your variance is approved. And for the record, I also approve. Did I, Thank I'm you sorry, very much. did I not say, I apologize. Let me just, Mr. Sprunger, you vote to approve as well? Sure. Yes. I, I missed you during the during the muting, non-mutings. Sorry about that. Thank you for saying something. Okay. So again, that variance is approved. Uh, we'll move on to the next, and I believe the final uh, final petition this evening. Is that correct, Mr. Chair? That is correct. The final petition tonight is BA ten dash twenty two, Claudia. Welcome, 215 Strecker Road, Wildwood, Missouri, 63011, request an exception to the minimum yard requirements general for the purpose of constructing a new 24-foot by 38-foot detached garage upon the property located at 215 Strecker Road, locator number 22U240015, section 31, township 45 north, range 4 east, which would authorize a side yard setback of 20 feet in lieu of the 30 foot standard. This request is contrary to the requirements of chapter 415.090 NU non-urban resident district regulations of the city of Wildwood zoning ordinance. This particular property is located in ward four. And again, before Ms. Keefe begins the slide presentation, the department would like to introduce into the record the following items. Chapter 400, Article 2 of the City of Wildwood Municipal Code, the Board of Adjustment, 
chapter 415 of the same city of Wildwood Municipal Code, the zoning ordinance, the file that has been developed and maintained by the Department of Planning regarding this particular request and all contents contained therein, including the department's report with recommendation. And then finally, any testimony or evidence as, as is provided tonight as part of this hearing. Thank you. All right. Thank you much, Mr. Bunich. Robin, do you have the presentation ready? I do. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Chair. All right, Mr. Chair and members of the board, our final case this evening uh, has to do with a property that's located in Northeastern Wildwood uh, in the Ellisville area. Um, as you can see, it's surrounded by Ellisville and then this is Wildwood. Uh, the land use pattern in this area is densely clustered uh, residential uh, development along um, on small lots that's around uh, large tracts of common ground. Uh, however, the subject lot, as you can see, is a fairly large lot zoned non-urban residence district um, surrounded by this, this type of dense uh, residential development. The subject lot is about two and a half acres and it is occupied by a 2,288 square foot single family home that was built in 2018. Um, it is just to the southwest of Strucker Road, which is a city maintained arterial road. The lot does have some significant uh, slope to it, around 50 feet of overall relief. Uh, the more level portions are on the uh, western portion of the lot. This is a view of Strucker looking northwest. And this is looking uh, southeast of Strucker. This is looking south at the front of the home. And looking at their plan, uh, this would be the proposed three-car garage in orange. And this is their current residence. And here you can see their drive. This is Strucker. And these are the properties um, most affected. Uh, this is a view uh, looking south. And then this is the general area uh, where the garage, uh, proposed garage is to be constructed. This is looking a little bit more Southwest. And uh, here is um, another look at the residence. These are the elevations of the proposed garage to give you an idea of, of what it will look like. And since their initial application, uh, the applicant has, has been doing their homework. Uh, they submitted a tree preservation plan that shows that uh, they are looking to preserve the majority of trees on their lot. Um, however, they are proposing to remove four trees as depicted here with the largest being a 16 inch oak tree um, at diameter at breast height. However, uh, they are working to preserve these two trees here, which are, are fairly large trees. And uh, the department understanding uh, based on the letter to the Board of, Adjust Board of Adjustment, as well as uh, letters from their neighbors, uh, there is currently a plan to plant uh, cedar trees along the fence line. Um, and one neighbor mentioned three eight foot cedar trees. This is a view of those neighbors looking northwest. Northwest again. And west. This is looking north. And then uh, to give you an idea of the rest of the lot, uh, this is looking northeast. 
This is actually back behind their home in that general area of the proposed garage construction. And this is looking southeast. And then this is um, around the other side of the home uh, looking northeast again. Uh, so you can see some of the slope um, on the plot. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the um, applicant has been busy engaging uh, his neighbors uh, who are all in support of the proposed construction, uh, given uh, the conversations they've had, as well as the mitigation plan proposed. Um, so with that, I will conclude our presentation and uh, thank you. Uh, Director Vunich and I are here uh, if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. At this time, will the petitioner please come forward, state he or she's name, address, relation to the property, and then be sworn in by the court reporter? Uh, yeah, Claude, welcome. 215 Strecker Road, Wild Missouri, 63011. I am the owner of the property since uh, 2017. Courtney, can you swear him in, please? Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Welcome. Uh, can you please explain the, uh, the nature of the request, the hardship or practical difficulty uh, necessitating the variance as it relates to the property? Looks like Mr. Welcome may have froze for a moment. We'll give it a minute here. Hi. You there? Yeah, can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Welcome. All right, sorry about that. Um, anyway, so back in 2017, we bought the property. There was an old uh, house from the 70s, I believe. Um, anyways, long story short, we opted to salvage the foundation of the old house in lieu of, you know, reformatting the layout um, of, of the new house that we constructed. So we saved the old foundation, preserved all the trees. As you can tell, there's a lot of trees on the property. Um, but that being said, we wanted to uh, preserve as many as we could. So that, that is the reason for the floor plan, for the floor plan of the single family residence. The detached garage, um, which is what we're, uh, building now, it kind of presents a um, a little bit of a hurdle when you come, uh, I guess, aesthetically, maybe, or just in general, driving down a driveway, being able to hit, you know, one of the three garages. Um, the variance that we're asking for in lieu of a 30 foot setback is a 20 foot at the northwest corner of the garage. Um, and the reason that we have to have that is because the the garage kind of turns a little bit, so that northwest corner encroaches on that on that setback. Um, another thing I would probably note is that if we did scoot it back to within the thirty foot setback, um, there is a side yard which was uh, visible in one of the pictures that didn't have trees because obviously there's a lot of land, but a lot of trees, that one side yard would basically be cut off um, from the rest of the property as far as usable land without trees. So we're trying to, we're trying to set, we're trying to save as many trees as we can, but we're also trying to save what little grass we have as well. So that's pretty much it. Yeah. I've spoken with the neighbors. Um, they're all on board. Back when we took over the property back in, in 17, it was overgrown and, and pretty unsightly uh, to say the least. And we've done a lot to manicure the property over the years. Um, it's definitely something that um, has been a net positive. Um, and we don't, I don't feel that the addition of a garage on one corner being within a setback would uh, deter from what we have done from the property. And, my neighbors have agreed. I think we have three of them that were on board. Um, I have since spoken to one other of the six neighbors. Um, she was kind of different. Um, couldn't get a hold of one of the of the other ones. And then I actually have 
a letter. Um, if I need to submit, I will from the fourth um, neighbor in agreement that um, the variance should be allowed. That's all I've got. Thank you, board. Great. Thank you for your due diligence there, Mr. Welcome. Yep. Any, uh, any questions uh, from the board? Seeing none, is that correct? Um, Mr. Bunich, any, any additional members of the audience that would like to speak in favor or against the petition? Thank you, Mr. Chair. There is one attendee and to that attendee, if you would like to speak on this particular matter, if you would use the raise hand feature, the department would be glad to promote you so you could participate. Mr. Chair, I do not see a raised hand. So I believe um, the individual would be would like just to listen. Thank you. All right. Um, would anybody like to hear an oral presentation of the department's report? Seeing none, um, any final comments from the Department of Planning? Uh, yes, the Department of Planning is in support of the variance this evening. Uh, we'd like to uh, thank Mr. Welcome for uh, perhaps being a model of what a petitioner <laughs> should do in the instance of requesting a variance. Uh, we just commend the neighborhood engagement um, and uh, just just the conversations with the neighbors. So, um, yes, we are supporting the variance this evening. Okay. Anybody from the board, uh, any final comments? Seeing none, uh, we will close the proceeding for a vote. May I have a motion to approve, a uh, motion to deny, or a motion to approve with conditions? May I okay. add just one more comment? Sure. Uh, we, are, we are requesting just as a condition that we see a final landscape plan as, as part of the submittal uh, for zoning authorization. All right. Thank you, Robin. A uh, motion to approve, a motion to deny, or a motion motion to approve with conditions? I'll make a motion to approve the variance request with the condition that an acceptable landscape plan is presented to the city for approval. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sprunger. We have a motion to approve with the condition that a landscape plan is submitted to the city. Um, do I have a second to that motion? Mr. Morris. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sprunger, you go first since I forgot you last time. How do you vote? <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I approve. Mr. Lux. I approve also. Mr. Morris. Approve. Ms. Coleman. Approve. And I approve as well. So congratulations. Your variance awesome. is approved. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Robin or Director Bunich, any anything else to add before we close the hearing here? Uh, I do not. Okay. Just as always, thank you for your service and to Mr. Cross and our two city attorneys. Thanks for being here tonight. Yes, thank you everybody. That being said, this, this uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank Have you. Good evening. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Courtney, too. Thank you. Yes, thank you.